Namaskaram dear friends after a very long time due to certain professional commitments i am back with the recent guidelines of american academy of pediatrics 2022 for the management of neonatal hyperbilirubinemia in infants who are near term or term that is more than equal to 35 weeks of gestational age why i am discussing this because neonatal hyperbilirubinemia is invariably a case in the md pediatrics examination and everyone is expected to know at least this and recent recommendations of course the md pediatrics final going final exam going students are expected to know so the first recommendation is regards antenatal maternal antibody screening it says that maternal screening for anti rbc antibodies in rh negative females who have already received an anti rh prophylaxis that is have received anti rh antibodies they would obviously be positive so in these females a positive direct antiglobulin test or coombs test can be ignored that is the result can not be considered to be true if the mother has turned to be dat positive after rh anti rh prophylaxis screening for jaundice this is a very important uh, recommendation now aap recommends a universal total serum bilirubin or transcutaneous bilirubin screening and it says that it needs to be done between 24 to 48 hours of birth or prior to discharge if it occurs earlier than 24 hours of birth now for those who are confused between tsb and tcb i like to tell you that this is the method by which transcutaneous bilirubin is monitored this is a transcutaneous bilirubinometer and it is it measures the serum bilirubin it measures the cutaneous bilirubin levels based on optical spectroscopy which relates the amount of light absorption by the bilirubin to the concentration of bilirubin which is present in the skin tsb measures the blood levels of bilirubin whereas tcb measures the skin levels of bilirubin and uh, a recent paper on the diagnostic accuracy of transcutaneous bilirubinometer published in 2020 says that the correlation is fairly good correlation between tsb and tcb is fairly good earlier aap recommended that universal screening should be done by visual assessment every 8 to 12 hours that is why resident used to be posted in postnatal ward and he would take rounds every 12 hourly at least to pick up neonates who develop jaundice and the kramer screening criteria was there to visually assess the level of jaundice it has also specified certain risk factors for significant hyperbilirubinemia and these include a lower gestational age jaundice within the first 24 hours we all know is it is a pathological jaundice tsb or tcb nearing phototherapy threshold or the use of phototherapy any time before discharge hemolytic conditions exclusively breastfed infants but who are not taking breast milk adequately and scalp hematoma and history of phototherapy in parents or siblings so these are the risk factors if present you must consider that the child the baby can develop significant hyperbilirubinemia one more addition which they have made is that of down syndrome if a baby has down syndrome he has the likelihood of developing significant hyperbilirubinemia they have excluded three risk factors which are the maternal age male gender and east asian race which were earlier included as risk factors then there are certain risk factors which can predispose to hyperbilirubinemia neurotoxicity that is the possible likelihood likelihood of developing acute bilirubin encephalopathy these are gestational age less than 38 weeks that is prematurity albumin less than 3 grams per deciliter sepsis hemolytic conditions and significant clinical instability in the previous 24 hours this is very important most of the time we don't consider that clinical instability can also precipitate bilirubin encephalopathy earlier they had also included autoimmune hemolytic disease g6pd deficiency and lethargy as risk factors for hyperbilirubinemia neurotoxicity which they haven't mentioned this year another important recommendation they have made is that they have rechristened the term breastfeeding jaundice to suboptimal intake hyperbilirubinemia which in itself is explanatory to suggest that baby's intake of breast milk is inadequate and that is why 
the baby is developing jaundice so this is very important recommendation and it also says that infants who have developed this breastfeeding jaundice or who are at risk of developing breastfeeding jaundice that is they are having suboptimal feeding or they are having excessive weight loss in them instead of depending on breast milk alone supplementation with formula milk can be considered depending on the risk assessment of risk factors also home based phototherapy is recommended to be used for discharged newborns who are more than 38 weeks gestational age and their age is more than 48 hours at least they are feeding adequately they have no risk factors for neurotoxicity they have not received any previous phototherapy their total serum bilirubin concentrations are not more than 1 mg per deciliter above the phototherapy treatment threshold they have an led based phototherapy device at home and they can measure total serum bilirubin levels daily so in short they have no other problem other than serum bilirubin levels more than 1 mg per deciliter more than the phototherapy threshold phototherapy can be discontinued when total serum bilirubin falls 2 mg per deciliter below the cutoff at which the phototherapy was initiated and a longer duration is recommended for those with risk factors for rebound hyperbilirubinemia which i shall be discussing further in this video risk factors for rebound hyperbilirubinemia which have been specified by aap in 2022 include gestational age below 38 weeks those who require phototherapy initiation below 48 hours and hemorrhagic disease serum bilirubin levels or rebound bilirubin levels should be measured on the day after phototherapy is stopped at least 12 hours or preferably 24 hours later and earlier measurement that is at 6 to 12 hours can be done for those with risk factors for rebound hyperbilirubinemia the method used for measuring the bilirubin levels is tcb if at least 24 hours have elapsed since what stopping phototherapy if I, and if at any time you are measuring at less than 24 hours of stopping phototherapy you should preferably use tsb levels now there is another terminology referred to as escalation of care threshold this has been defined as 2 mg per deciliter below the exchange threshold when you need to intensify your treatment strategy to prevent the newborn developing hyperbilirubinemia levels in the exchange range treatment or monitoring required for babies with neonatal hyperbilirubinemia include nicu admission intravenous hydration and intensive phototherapy ivig should be considered in iso immune hemolytic disease of the newborn and two hourly total serum bilirubin bilirubin level monitoring should be done until values fall below the threshold so the workup which is recommended in iso immune hemolytic anemia includes total and direct bilirubin albumin levels blood chemistry blood group cross match to arrange blood for exchange transfusion complete blood counts and g6pd levels exchange transfusion is recommended for only two conditions that is acute bilirubin encephalopathy or total serum bilirubin levels at exchange cutoffs now recommendations by aap no longer vary for during birth hospitalization and readmissions in this regard like for readmitted infants earlier aap said that exchange transfusion should be considered only if total serum bilirubin levels remained above the exchange threshold even after 6 hours of intensive phototherapy or if the neonate had developed features of abe that is acute bilirubin encephalopathy any time after readmission and earlier aap had discriminated between during birth hospitalization and hospitalization later on that is readmission but now it does not also it says that the whole blood which we use for exchange transfusion should have a hematocrit of at least 40% for the benefit of increasing bilirubin clearance with additional albumin while earlier it had not specified any such hematocrit level the risk assessment schedule before discharge and subsequent follow up should be based on pre difference between the pre discharge 
TSB or TCB measured at least 12 hours after birth and the phototherapy cut off. While earlier the schedule was based on Bhutani nomograms for risk stratification based on pre-discharge bilirubin. So to summarize, AAP in 2022 has come up with important recommendations for neonatal hyperbilirubinemia in near term and term infants and it says that positive direct antiglobulin test in an, an RH negative mother can be ignored if it occurs after the administration of anti-RH prophylaxis and is positive for anti-RH antibodies alone. Universal total serum bilirubin or transcutaneous bilirubin screening is recommended between 24 to 48 hours of birth or prior to discharge if the discharge occurs anytime less than 24 hours duration. Risk factors for significant hyperbilirubinemia and hyperbilirubinemia neurotoxicity have been specified. Breastfeeding jaundice has been renamed to suboptimal intake hyperbilirubinemia. Recommendations have been given for foam based phototherapy and for rebound hyperbilirubinemia. Escalation of care threshold has been defined as bilirubin levels 2 mg per deciliter below the exchange levels when you need to intensify your treatment strategy. And exchange transfusion indications are acute bilirubin encephalopathy and total serum bilirubin levels at exchange levels. Whole blood for exchange transfusion should have a hematocrit of at least 40% for the same. Thank you so much for a very patient listening and watching and please do share the knowledge for maximum benefit of everyone. Thanks a lot.